Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts back. Let's get another reaction for you guys. Take guys, of course, we are continuing Wolverine and the X-Men. This is season one, episode nine, Future X. Now, interesting title, not sure what that means, but it says future, so maybe involving something else with Professor X, because he is in the future right now. So maybe there's some sort of other mission or something that the X-Men have to go on in involving the future or something, I'm not really sure. But uh, I'm excited, I'm really enjoying the show. Last week's episode, Time Bomb, was insane. It was really insane. This mutant, who I believe some people were saying that he was from the comics or whatever, um, I just don't remember on top of my head, but his powers were so unique because he couldn't control them. Now, maybe he could if he, like, you know, practiced over time to kind of know when he's going to explode and to maybe kind of find a way to suppress it. They were trying to use a way to suppress it, you know, uh, the, the, the Brotherhood by getting Psylocke, and that didn't really work out very well. And the fact that Rogue, they were showing throughout the episode where Rogue was actually trying to help, you know, Time Bomb, you know, that, that, that's what, you know, they actually gave him a name, but I just think with Time Bomb, because that was the episode title, and that's kind of what he was. He was a time, but taking Time Bomb. But they were showing Rogue how she was trying to help him out of everyone else, and the Brotherhood didn't really care. They were using him for their own means. Um, and the fact that when she actually came across the X-Men, the fact that she betrayed them early on in the show, I think hindsight part two, the second episode is when the betrayal happened, I remember correctly. I think I remember that correctly. And they had different ways of responding to her. Like Kitty went past her like, hey, Rogue, and then just kept walking, <laughs> just kept, you know, using her phasing abilities. And the uh, Beast uh, said, excuse me, and then uh, Wolverine completely ignored her. So, yeah. Um, like I said, I'm really enjoying the show. As I'm continuing with the show, I'm liking the character development, I'm liking the stories they're telling, and it's just making me more and more upset that there's no season two, because they had planned for a season two. They had stuff in the works. There was concept art for characters for season two that weren't in season one, and I haven't seen that stuff, but I know that they had, because I saw it on the Wikipedia, that they were revealing stuff at, at Comic-Con or something, or some sort of event after season one saying season two's coming, and yeah, so it's pretty insane. Here we go, guys. Episode nine, Future X. Let's get into it and see what this episode's all about. Let's go. Okay. This again. Hard to believe you lifted a memory this clear out of my head. Oh. Your newer memories aren't okay. to access Logan. Just the old ones. Master mode? Yeah. Whatever it is, Senator Kelly's involved. No, I don't. Hmm. Sadly. It's good that he's able to speak to him in some way. He wrote a book? I'm sure he Hank. Oh shit, they found him. Man. Ah. Uh, they're giant sentinels. Jesus. Oh shit, they found Cerebro. God damn it. Man. Ooh. There it is. The Trask Industries. Oh shit. So are we posing for a painting here, Logan, or do you actually have a point? posing? Something it was a posing moment. Right. Mm. It's a lot of mutants. Face me and prepare for your inhibitor call. What the hell? He's still alive? Wait, you have mutant like abilities, kinda. You know what I'm saying? He's got mutant kinda like abilities, shouldn't he? I don't, I don't know. I guess it's to protect everybody. Transfer him to the tower. I said face you. You can Was that? I don't know who that was. They focused on him though. Is that? Is that Cable? Not Cable, sorry. Bishop. Not be quite enough, Colonel. Hello, Professor. My name is Bishop. Yes. Wolverine told me a lot about you. Mm -hmm. A few years back, he saved us from a sentinel attack. But got captured. That's the last we ever saw of him. Captured? Is that hard to believe? Nearly impossible. But these are strange days. Hmm. I don't understand the purpose of this place. At dawn, we're breaking every single mutant out of here. Quite the risk, allowing ourselves Quite the to risk, capture. yeah. Glad to become an X-Men to play it safe. <laughs> Besides, True. we have luck on our side. Really? You're still alive, really? <laughs> okay. When you told us of your charming little adventure here, I pictured it far more populated. Trask linked house. Frost, scan the guards' minds. So I already what... have. They didn't even know the building was empty. Oh. First... No way you're Charlie X. I'm 
prefer that my students address me as Professor. Mm. It may indeed sound ridiculous, but Sarah is right. And that's why I must get inside the tower. It's my only link to the past. Forget the past. You're mm. here now. And you've made everything worse. No, he, he's trying to help Sarah, wait. the future with look on the past. Don't let this crazy man get in your head, Bishop. You're our Yeah, he's crazy. He's Professor X. The guy Wolverine listens to. Your funeral. Well, he's gonna try. Well, that's the guy they took. Taking his abilities. He just lifted the cube telekinetically. They've mechanically reproduced that mutant child's power. Mm hmm. They're trying to evolve. Damn. He captured that shit. This one's cool. This, this one's like, a, this is, I think this is an actual machine. So it's quicker. Damn. Who wants presents? Who wants presents? Are you gonna go in there and help? Come on, do the right thing. Go in there and help. Oh shit. Nice. Adapting. Ooh. Okay, they came to help. They came to, oh, oh, it's him. Never mind. Damn. Okay, they're helping. Okay, they're doing something. Okay. Save the, you gotta save the professor. Okay. Damn. Dang. Well, the Sentinels adapt though, so you gotta be careful. Damn. Perfect. Yeah. Are we gonna see Master Mold? Mmm. He supercharged up. God damn, it just blew it in half. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Juggernaut. Holy shit. Holy crap, that's a giant master mold. I'm assuming that was master mold, right? Holy crap. There you have it, guys. Wow, this was a really, really good episode. I love the fact it said Future X is the title, and it actually was. Like, the majority of it was in the future, and it was all revolving around... The Sentinel program, Professor X getting captured, Cerebro getting captured, and then referencing and showing at the very end, Master Mold. Now, this version of Master Mold. Now, I remember, I pulled it up here uh, uh, before I started the review. Master Mold from the X-Men 90s animated series. I remember there was a Sentinel that created all the other Sentinels, and I forgot the name was Master Mold, but now I have it here. I'm like, yep, that's exactly who it was. That was Master Mold, a, a bigger version of the, of the Sentinels creating other Sentinels. Um, and there's different uh, interpretations of the look of Master Mold. I like that this Master Mold is, a, it looks very different than the other versions that we've seen. Um, and the Sentinels look kind of close to what we're used to seeing for Sentinels uh, in the X-Men comics and, of course, other interpretations of the X-Men in uh, animation form. But uh, I like the fact that Master Mold looks a lot different. It's, it's just a different interpretation. It looks really cool. So, with the future, I like the fact that the stakes were pretty high in this episode because we had... We were we were re-seeing episode, I think, what was it, five, Thieves' Gambit? I believe that was the episode number um, with the Gambit's intro introduction with Bolivar Trask. We were re-watching that whole section. We see Bolivar Trask introduced and Wolverine attacking the facility and then realizing, oh, it's not like a flashback leading us into something. It is actually Professor X and Wolverine walking through the scene together and then showing Master Mold was on a screen. 
and um, how that ties into the future. And the stakes in this episode were the Professor X, after talking to Logan again, which is a great thing that they ha they actually have within the show, because Professor X is trying to, you know, prevent things from happening in the future he's currently in, so that the future will change. Now I'm curious how that would look if, if they make a major drastic change in the past. How that would greatly affect the timeline that Professor X is actually in. Would it be seen automatically? Would he wake up to a completely different timeline? You know, in terms of a future, I don't know if something drastic was to happen. But so he gets captured. Cerebro is discovered, and of course, is taken away to this facility that there's so much of mutants, including I think uh, what is her name off the top of my head? Uh, what is her name? Um, I have to look up the actual actress who played her in live action. I think that's the same, Domino, is, is that her name? Domino, that the character? I gotta, I gotta look it up just to verify. Domino, um, let's see here. Other versions in television. Yeah, Wolverine and the X-Men, she first appears in Hunts of Part Brotherhood, and later appears in the alternate future as Professor X, as a member of Professor X's X-Men, yeah. So Domino, I couldn't remember the time I had what her name was, but they had Domino in the future, and they also had Bishop, who we didn't see, we haven't seen him in the present. I'm assuming he would probably, probably pop up in the present, maybe within this season before the cancellation, or maybe it was always intended to be later on, he eventually shows up as a part of the X-Men for in some way, some somehow. So they actually go into the facility because they have to get Cerebro back. Cerebro back. I can't talk. I mean, I said that right the first time. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I, it's been a long day. I'm very tired. Apologies. So anyways, so they save this mutant and they're going against the Sentinels. And it turns out that that one guy who was running the MRD, who we met in the first episode, uh, got the scars on his face. He's voiced by Michael Ironside. He's still alive, but he's more like a sentinel now. Like, he has all these powers and shit, and he's like a sentinel. He's like a mutant, essentially, but he's more like a sentinel now than human at this point. But it turns out the sentinels are actually running the whole thing, and even he doesn't know what he's doing. He's just a bit, uh, just obeying what the sentinels want him to do. He doesn't even know what's going on. But uh, some great action in this episode, and we have a new version of the X-Men in the future here. Future X makes sense for the title. And um, so now Professor X is not alone because he was alone for quite a bit when he woke up in the future. Like he was just doing his best to communicate to the X-Men and specifically to Wolverine the majority of the time uh, to inform them of stuff. So now he can still do that, thankfully. But now Cerebro can be portable. It can be moved. It's not just one giant machine or one giant room that has to be secure within the mansion itself. But uh, thankfully, uh, everything's... Uh, okay for right now at least there's still a lot you know that's going on going on because now the sentinel has went to master mold and has said this facility was destroyed it seemed like it was just one of many um and the the, the person to blame is professor x and i saw a picture of juggernaut there there were some other mutants as well i'm gonna have to go back and see who all was in that uh, those images but um i hope we can see juggernaut i hope so but uh this was really, really cool to see this. And what I like, too, is that they also showed current day, which I was, like, mentioning. We were going to see all these characters together. We actually see a bunch of them together going back to the facility. And the two guards outside, the two guards at MRD didn't even know it was empty. And they cleaned out. And it makes sense they cleaned out because Wolverine survived. And regardless of the outcome of that event, they have to move everything. So they're not going to be there when they go back. But they go back. There's no one there. It's all empty. So now they have to find another way to get access to uh, Master Mold. Because now Master Mold in the future knows Professor X is alive as a telepath. They have to, in the past, well, present day, our timeline, we're watching the show, and then the future is for uh, Professor X. It's, it's confusing, I know, because like his past is our present, and then his current present is their future. So it's all, all over the place. Timey-wimey, right? Uh but they have to find the plans for Master Mold and prevent it. And I'm wondering if they do figure out a way to prevent Master Mold in its current state in the present, how is that going to affect the future? Like, how is that going to drastically change things? I don't know. Um, but I'm assuming that this is going to be a storyline we're going to follow all the way through to the end of Season 1. I doubt there's going to be any real resolution. I could be wrong. Could be enough changes to where Professor X will wake up actually in the present instead of being in the future when there's enough changes that have ma been made by Professor X in the future telling them in the past to fix something because they prevented some stuff at this point or they've went about things a certain way differently than they would have because Professor X told Wolverine, we have to do it this way, we have to do this, we have to do this. So maybe it'll be, maybe there'll be enough uh, 
changes and effects to where it will revert back to normal. Maybe. Or some sort of thing to where the future is not going to be like that. Because the future looks completely and utterly terrible. Like, I don't know where humans are living at this point. Because when Professor X woke up, the whole entire area around him was completely destroyed and everything. It looks bad. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, is there, like, no human life except for mutants and sentinels? I don't even know. Like, it looks horrible. And it's only, like, what, 20 years in the future? It looks... I don't even... God. <laughs> It doesn't look good. But I'm liking how they're telling the story here where this was more focused on Professor X, finding out there's a new X-Men. And it seems that they just put it, they just put a tombstone, a headstone up for Wolverine, but they don't know if he's actually dead. He was captured, but he was never seen again. But presumably he might still be alive. And Professor X, they made a point for Professor X to go, really, he was captured? Well, we are living in, we are living in different times. Like essentially referring to the fact that Wolverine never gets captured, so maybe it was a plan. Maybe Wolverine was captured for a reason. I don't know, because maybe he can withstand whatever experiments or things they want to do to him. Maybe they're going to reveal that he is alive in the future still. He is still alive in the future, and that I don't know how that's going to tie into the fact that he's talking to past Wolverine, but anyways, this show is just, it's good. It's a good show. It's good. So what would you guys think of this episode of Wolverine and the X-Men for me? I really enjoyed it. Some great action, some great storytelling, and uh, some good surprises with Bishop being there and kicking ass and uh, seeing Domino surprisingly. I wasn't expecting to see her. And seeing uh, some new mutants that I don't really recognize and seeing them using their abilities is just cool that we're expanding uh, all of the characters involved in the show in some sort of way. So hope you guys enjoy the reaction. I will talk to you guys soon. Peace out.